Check this shit out. As a kid, I was obsessed with The Simpsons. Like many 80s babies, I was sucked in by its t-shirt-worthy catchphrases, but as I got older, the appeal of The Simpsons was way more about clever wordplay, bizarre references, and ridiculous scenarios. My sweet mom was surprisingly supportive of me watching it, considering it wasn't making huge waves with middle American mothers. I didn't make the connection at the time, but I'm sure it's because The Simpsons reminded her of her favorite childhood cartoon, Rocky and Bullwinkle. If you've never seen it, Rocky and Bullwinkle is really smart, way ahead of its time in terms of well-crafted one-liners, insane characters, and pun after pun of subtle and not-so-subtle wordplay. When you watch more recent children's programs like Adventure Time or Regular Show with humor clearly catering to adults who may or may not be on drugs, you can absolutely trace their animated origins back to Rocky and Bullwinkle. The show initially aired from 1959 to 1964, and aside from a couple of why did they make this film adaptations in the late 90s, there were about 30 years where Rocky and Bullwinkle's only presence was on the vintage cartoon shelf at your local blockbuster. So why in 1992 would they create an NES game of the classic cartoon? No idea. I mean, it kind of makes a little more sense than the similarly antiquated TV show turned video game adaptations like Gilligan's Island or The Lone Ranger, but what audience out there was clamoring for this? Well, me apparently, as yes, this is my original copy from 30 years ago. Holding strong. How is the game? Well, to start off, the basic elements are true to its roots. There's Rocky, there's Bullwinkle, there's Boris and Natasha, there's these little silly level names, and yeah, while it doesn't look great, the sprites and stage designs are reminiscent of the source material. Although I don't remember this tiny chef from many episodes, he's surprisingly menacing. The story is just one panel about traveling to Eastern Europe to collect Bullwinkle's inheritance because apparently wire transfers weren't a thing. You play as both Rocky and Bullwinkle and you can switch between the two at any time by pressing the select button. Sweet. Rocky can briefly fly and can be kind of short when you need him to walk under things. Bullwinkle can charge at enemies with his antlers and, Jesus, walk upstairs? What a tool set. The flight and bull charge both take a tick of life away, so you'll need to be stringent about how and when you use them. Both buddies can throw bombs, which are not very effective as they take several explosions to kill even the smallest of enemies. So what's not great about Adventures of Rocky and Bullwinkle? Well, it's got all the classic bad game tropes. The controls are stiff and slippery, meaning jumping and landing on platforms is way harder than it should be. The stages aren't visually that atrocious, but very little actually happens in them, with large stretches of empty spaces with nothing to do. The bad guys are completely mindless, just standing still and shooting endlessly, or running right toward and past you. The music is some of the worst on the NES, consisting of a few very short, annoying loops and what I can only describe as the mating call of two calculators in heat. Mostly though, this is just a boring, monotonous experience. There's no real attack in this game other than the bombs, which are useless, and Bullwinkle's nudging, which always hurts you more than it injures your enemies. The few times that you actually use the bombs, you'll find that you can only hit the bad guys at the most perfectly placed distances, and even if you've lined it up immaculately, the edge of the screen itself may still deny you. There's also zero recovery time when you get hit, meaning you can go from full life to dead in mere seconds. As a result, your best bet at all times is just to jump over every enemy or hazard, and if you have the life bar for it, simply float over them with Rocky. And honestly, what kind of game is that, where the most effective and necessary tactic is just avoiding interacting with every obstacle? I can do that on my own by just not playing a game. After five levels of mind-numbing banality, you'll reach this hallway, run to the right, and the end. Bullwinkle gets his uncle's fortune. I love that they threw in this little bit with the IRS at the end, like, yeah, you won, but at what cost? Huh? Get it? That's a Rocky and Bullwinkle joke right there. Oh hi! Just wanted to give a quick shout out to my newest Patreon subscriber and best name winner, Simp Phony of the Night. Thanks man! I'm making weekly exclusive videos over at patreon.com slash biggoldword, so if you like my channel and want to see more, there's a link in the description. I'm also streaming a different game every Thursday at 9pm Eastern Standard Time here on YouTube, so come hang out why don't you? Until next time, thanks for watching!